In this video, we will show you how EasyPrice Pro software can change the way you estimate for the better. We will be pricing up a small two-story extension together with some refurbishment alteration type work to the existing property. To price this job up, we will use two programs, our New Houses and Extensions program and our Total Build program. To price the extension side of things, we select the New House Extensions program from our main menu. We now need to select our Start New Quotation option. I have already done this and have completed the relevant form that you will then see once you choose this option. You can see here we simply enter in the client and job details together with our customer's contact details. Once you've filled in all the relevant boxes, hit the Save and Start New Quote button and the program will then proceed onto the pricing sheet. Now, this is our pricing sheet. It is laid out in a very logical, methodical order, right from the initial site setup all the way through the various stages of the project through to completion. We simply need to enter in information into the sections that are relevant to the project that we wish to price. You're going to see a number of boxes that require information from us. These are all colour coded as an easy reference point for yourself. Red ones are important to fill in if they're required for the job. They might not possibly be relevant, but they're highlighted red because potentially they could be important. Blue boxes are to be filled in at your judgement as the estimator. These will tend to be plant or tool hire, because the program A cannot foresee if you need that item, and if you do need it, it's got no way of knowing how long you may need the item for. Yellow boxes are all drop-down menus. These are material items or pieces of equipment that can be changed as you work your way through the pricing sheet. The green boxes that you will see are the prices that have been drawn over from our central library. To give you an idea of the kind of project we are pricing up, I have a picture I'm able to show you. Here you can see a two-storey extension to the rear of this existing property. It's a 5 metre by 5 metre extension. Our ground floor consists of blockwork internal leaf with a brickwork external leaf. Upstairs we have a cavity wall with blockwork internally and externally with a rendered finish, as you can see. First up, we need to allow for some items for the setting up of our site. Open the section up by clicking on the small box. Here you can see an assortment of items to allow for the cost of the clearance of the site as well as the disposal of any waste and some further items to allow for the setting up of our site. We need some fencing. Simply enter in the duration you require the item for, together with the quantity required. As you can see, once we've entered these numbers into the blue boxes, the program calculates the cost of the material or item for the duration that we've entered into that box. Next up, our foundations. We have three options here. A raft foundation, trench foundation and stilt or pad foundation. We simply click the box next to the relevant method to open up that section of the pricing sheet. Here you can see the program wants to know how many external and internal corners and whether we have any internal trench foundations. Lots of small graphics are dotted around on this pricing sheet. These are there as a point of reference for you, making it nice and clear exactly what the program requires from yourself. As you can see, we have an area rather like this section here which would just have two external corners, no internals, and no internal foundations as we just have one room downstairs and one room upstairs. So this number will be two. Program wants to know the length of our main foundation run. Well, we have three sides at five meters, 15 linear meters. It then wants to know the depth and width of our excavation as well as the depth from the ground to the top of the foundation. Again, we have a very useful graphic there, making it nice and clear exactly what you need to provide the program with. Once you've entered the relevant details in, hit the enter button. The program will then do a number of calculations for you. You can see it's calculated the amount of concrete that we require for our foundation. We have some timber for the setting out of the site. Here we can include the cost of any plant that we might require for the excavation of the soil. We can change the item within the box by clicking on the drop down available and selecting the product that we wish to use. We need a digger for a day. You can see the program has allowed for the cost of the item together with the labour time allowed for 
that section of work to be completed. The program has also allowed for a skip for the removal of the soils. It has calculated the expansion of the soil according to the percentage rate in the yellow box. We can change the method of disposal by clicking on the picture of skip and we can select a different size skip or a completely different method of disposal should we see the need to. Here our concrete itself has been calculated. We have allowed a 6% wastage allowance and also rounded up to the nearest orderable quantity. As you can see, everything has the relevant amount of labour hours and cost allocated to each task. Next up, our ground floor. Here the program wishes to know the depth of topsoil that needs to be removed from the oversight. We'll say that's 300 mil. It then wants to know the length of our external walls on the outer leaf. 15 linear meters. We've told it how many corners we have, so it calculates the internal leaf for us. You can see another little graphic here where we can change the type of wall structure in our walls below DPC. If you did have any internal load bearing walls upon any internal foundations, simply enter in the overall length of which type of wall you require into the red boxes in the middle. Here we need to tell the program our floor area and whether we're doing a concrete slab floor or whether we're going to be using block and beam. 5 by 5 is 25 meters. Again we can allow for some plant for the excavation of our soils. and the removal of the soils from site has automatically been allowed for us. Here we have our bricks and blocks, sand and cement, as well as any other items that we require for our walls below DPC. Again, we can change any of these products. These are all drop-down menus, so should we need to use perhaps a solid concrete block, we can choose it from the options available. Our block and beam floor is all priced up here, together with the concrete under the floor voids, and if we put some information into our red box for our concrete slab, then our aggregates for our sub-base, as well as the products we require for the slab itself, will all be calculated within this section here. Next up, our walls. As you can see, we have lots of options available to us. A single wall, we will choose a double wall. Here you can see we can change the type of material used on the external leaf and internal leaf. I shall leave it on the default option of brickwork externally and blockwork internally. We can also change the actual item by clicking on the drop down available. We can select a different allowance for our bricks or perhaps the actual type of brick that we wish to use from all of the products that we have stored within our library. I will just switch these products over to a lightweight type block. Hit the enter button. The program will just do some changes to our pricing sheet according to the type of product that we have chosen from the options available to us. Simply click this box to copy over the length of our walls from our ground floor footings. We then simply need to enter in the height of this area of our wall structure. This section with a brickwork external leaf is going to go up to a height of 2.5 metres. We can now set up a different type of wall structure for our upper floor walls using the additional wall sections tab on the side. Click on the picture. You can see section 2 highlighted in bold. We can retitle this section and call it our first floor walls. Like so. We can then also select the type of product that we wish to use on both of our leaves, internally and externally. Enter in the relevant measurements into the red boxes. Here you can see we can enter in the length of any internal masonry walls, should they be required. Please note the heads up that we don't include studwork partitions in this section. These would be included in the first fix carpentry. You can see the program has quantified how many square metres of brick and block we require for the various wall sections, as well as the labour time and labour cost for those items. DPC has been calculated, sand, cement, 
insulation within the cavity, absolutely all the items that we require for the completion of this stage have been allowed for. The program is incredibly thorough and very, very accurate. It will not forget anything. It will leave no stone unturned. Even the number of wall ties that you require for the project will be calculated to the exact number. You can also change some of the details regarding such products as you can see from this graphic here. Notice that when you start to enter information in for your openings, the program will allow for the extra ties required around all of those openings. Again, we can change some of these items using the drop downs available to us. So should we need to choose from a different type of insulation within our cavity, then we can click on the ball on the picked on the drop down and choose a different item altogether. Here we can allow for preparation for our upper floor walls to be rendered, or perhaps if we were cladding the walls with a UPVC type product or timber cladding, then we can choose to do so. Click on the picture next to the rendering, tell the program which area of walling we require render for, hit the enter button, and you can see the program has allowed for the metal lath sheeting that we will require to prep prepare those walls for rendering. The program is intuitive. It will look at information that we've already provided it with. You can see here it's calculated the amount of scaffolding we require according to the size of our wall structures. Next up we have our windows and doors. You can see we have a few options here to choose from. Plastic frames, timber frames or perhaps even purpose made bespoke frames. Over here we have a, a list of sizes on the left hand side and all we need to do is enter in the type size of window and tell the program whereabouts within our wall structures those openings will be. As I said, we do also need to tell the program whereabouts in our wall structure these openings will be. This is because the program will recalculate our bricks and blocks to allow for all the openings not only that, it will reduce the amount of sand and cement, it will calculate your cavity closes, your window board, angle bead around all the reels. So just a few numbers into a few boxes and the program again has done a huge amount of calculations for you and making sure that no product is forgotten and no stone is left unturned. You can see that we can include standard doorways, patio doors, French doors and garage doors should we need them. I will allow for a couple of these French door frames on my ground floor walls. The glazing section is blank because I've left it on the plastic option, but should you have chosen one of the other options, then all your glazing information will be priced up within this section here. Here you can see the program has looked at the size of all of my openings and has allowed for the relevant length of lintel and the quantity of lintels required. Again, Another drop down available, we can change the manufacturer or type of lintel from the options available to us. We can also allow for any structural steels that we may require on the job. Again, drop down, click on the drop down, choose the profile of beam that we require, enter in the length required. We can then set the padstone type, engineering bricks, or solid concrete blocks, two pad stones, one at each end of the beam, and all these items have now been allowed for. Upstairs we have two options, timber joists or block and beam joists for our upper floor joists. You can see we can break it up into sections or bays. We can choose the profile of timber for our floor joists, and all we need to do is simply enter in the width and length of each bay. You can see the program has calculated the timber we require and also a cutting list 10 at 5.1. All the other items associated with this job have been calculated for you as you can see. Joist hangers, straps as well as all the fixings required. Next up is our roof structure. Now the best way to approach this section of our pricing sheet is to use the graphics here in the middle of the page. Click on the top graphic to open up the roof wizard. 
Here you can tell the program whether you have an apex roof or a lean-to roof and whether it's a trust roof or a cut roof. Move to stage two. We have 10 different types of roof structure for you to choose from. We will go for a hip and valley cutting into the existing property as you saw on my image earlier on. Here we can change the profile of the timber for our rafters, ridge, collars, ceiling joists, hips and valleys. If we're doing a vaulted or raised tie type ceiling then we can remove the ceiling joists and collars altogether. Once this has been completed hit the enter button. You can see the program is now changing the pricing sheet for the roof type that we have selected within the roof wizard. Just to point this section over here out to you, if you were doing something a little bit more complicated, perhaps a new build property, you have an additional roof sections button over here on the right hand side. So if you did wish to do something along the lines of what you have within that graphic there, the main section in the middle you would price up as your main roof section, click on the picture here, and then section 2 could be the little lean-to bit that was on the side, section 3 be the bit on the opposite end, and so on and so on. So we can build the roof structure up in sections. Our next picture here, we just need to start to enter in some measurements. So the span of our roof internally will be 4.7. The soffit width we'll say is 150 millimeters. You can see the program has calculated the height of our roof structure, the actual rafter length required, and it's rounded up the rafters to the next available or orderable length of 4.2. We can change the pitch of the roof, and you can see as we do this, it recalculates the height as well as the rafter length required. Our last graphic here, we simply enter in the length of the roof and check the size of the centers. Here you can see we have a proper cutting list for our roof, all the timber we require at the available lengths for those items. Here you have the total amount of timber required for your roof structure. The insulation you can see has been calculated for you. If you had removed your ceiling joists, simply click on the little question mark here next to the insulation lines and you can see then you can tell the program that you wish to insulate up within the rafters and obviously then you can select a different type of insulation from the drop downs that are available to you. Should you require any extra timbers or bracing you can enter the length required into the blue boxes as well as perhaps a roof window VLUX type or key light type. Your fascias and soffits have all been calculated for you and again you can change the type of product you wish to use by clicking on the small box. Next up, our roof covering. You can see the program has calculated how many square meters of covering we require for our roof structure. All we need to do is tell it which type of product that we wish to use. We can choose from plain tiles, pan tiles, slates, or perhaps even polycarbonate sheeting. Simply click on one of the pictures. You will then have some further options available to you. You can select one of the allowances of however much per thousand tiles, or you can pick out an actual tile from the options that are available to you. Once this is completed, you can see the program has calculated the number of tiles we require, our battens, our felt, as well as all the other items that we require to complete the covering of our roof structure. Now, as I said, the program is very intuitive. We can now jump straight to our first fixed carpentry section, and you can see that it has allowed for the chipboard and insulation that we require for our ground floor masonry floors the chipboard that we require for our upstairs floor joists and here we can allow for any internal stud walls. Obviously we can change the profile of the timber for our studs. We then simply need to enter in the relevant measurements into the red boxes. Two rows of noggins. There you can see all the timber we require for the stud work has been calculated plasterboard on both sides of those stud walls, enter in the number of door lining kits required, whether they be single or double. The program will allow for those items. It will also, within the second fixed carpentry, have allowed for our skirting boards, architraves around our doorways, skirting boards on our internal masonry walls will have already been allowed for, and obviously within that second fixed carpentry section we can change the actual type and pro product that we wish to use, a different profile or perhaps we can switch it over to a Taurus or OG type skirting.
Within this section, we can also allow for different types of ceilings. Click on those pictures and you can see if you had removed your ceiling joists and collars, you can tell the program that you have a vaulted type ceiling. It will then recalculate the amount of plasterboard that you require for the underside of your rafters. I now need to allow for some electrics. You can see I also have the option for plumbing should I wish to use it. My first fix electrics, I simply need to tell the program how many of which type of item I require and whether they are be in stud walls or solid walls. Five double sockets, a double socket in a stud wall, three light switches in my solid walls, a light switch in my stud wall, six lighting points, television points and two smoke alarms program will allow, allow for my back boxes as well as the cable for my ring main and drops down to my switches and sockets. To calculate the ring main the program will look at the length of all of my wall structures and my stud walls and will allow for the relevant amount of cable required. At the end of the section you'll see a box here where we can set this as a provisional cost. This will make it nice and clear to our customer on the quote that we send over to them that we have just allowed a provisional cost of however much for the electrics, which is obviously subject to a change once an electrician gets involved on the job. I now just need to go to my plastering section and make a few tweaks. You'll see that the program has allowed for however many square metres of plastering to my internal masonry walls as well as to my internal partition walls. Click on the picture here and I can choose from the various methods of plastering for my internal masonry walls. I also have a couple of options available to me for my internal partition walls as you can see. Here I can allow for the materials required for the rendering of my external upstairs walls. When I hit the enter button you will see this area here become populated with all the materials for the rendering of those walls. My floor screed has been calculated, plastering of the ceilings as well as any other general items. Move on to the second fix electrics. You can see the program has allowed for all of the face plates for the back boxes that were included within the first fix carpentry section. I simply need to check the PC sum box to allow for this as a provisional cost on my pricing sheet. As I said, within the second fix carpentry section, we can tweak some of the finer detail. All the materials have been allowed for, quantified, but we can just choose from different profile as an example for our skirting boards or for our architrave should we see the need to do so. Now everything on my pricing sheet has been completed I'm now ready to move on to my reports. Click on the reports tab at the top of the screen. The first one that you wish to look at is the summary. This is a summary for yourselves this is not for your customer. As you can see, it is each section of the pricing sheet and the total direct costs for that section. You can see the sections I have highlighted as provisional costs have changed colour and this is pointed out very clearly at this point. At the end of the summary, you can see we have the totals for the entire job. On the left hand side here we have a pie chart giving us a graphic representation of those costs and the blue box there you can see is, allowing, uh, is showing us our current overall clear profit on the job. Here we can change the markup margin um, or profit margin on the plant, materials and labour. To change the percentages simply click on one of the boxes, change the number within the box and you'll then see that reflected over here on the left hand side. Once you're happy with all these figures, you're then ready to move on. Your next report is your payment schedule. As you can see, the program has calculated a stage payment plan for you, which will be included on the quotation you send over to the customer. 
obviously you can set this up so that you receive however much you see fit at the various stages of the project. You can also allow for an initial payment from your customer prior to the work taking place. To do this you simply take up an amount from each stage payment as an initial payment up front. Like so. As you can see this is reducing the following payment relevant to that stage and is giving us an initial payment from the customer of £3,000. Once you're happy with all this, move on to your next report. This is your work schedule. The program will generate this schedule of works for you from the starting date all the way through the various stages of the project through to completion. You can see another copy of your payment schedule there which is colour coded to marry up with that work schedule. The schedule is generated as a chart should you wish it, like so. This can also be edited by yourself if you need to move the various stages back or forth or perhaps even allow for some extra labour on a certain section. As you'll see this will now move forward, there we go. The program will also generate a full bill of quantities for you. It does just take half a minute or so to generate this, as I'm sure you can appreciate. It's a very complicated document, it's got an awful lot of information that it needs to prepare. There you go, so there's our bill of quants, all of our plant and tool hire, all the materials, labour time and labour costs absolutely everything is included on that document for you. It's worth pointing out by the way that all of these reports are printable or they can be saved as a PDF should you wish to email them over to somebody. The program will also generate you a material order sheet that you can send off to your supplier when you're ready for the um, items to be ordered to get them onto site. Again printable with or without prices or you can save it as a PDF. Should the client ask you for a breakdown of costs, you can generate this summary. This is the client's summary. looks very much like yours, but obviously it's including all your profit margins. No need for your customer to see your direct costs. And again, you can hide the labour hours from that, making that a much more client-friendly document. Final report is the written quote. The programme will generate a fully written quote for you to send off to your client. Again, this just takes a minute or so to generate this. I do believe we should have one saved somewhere on here for you to have a look at. There we go, so here's an example of a quotation that we've put together. So you get a written cover letter, some information for your customer to read through regarding the actual project, not too much technical jargon, you don't want to completely bamboozle them, but just some uh, measurements, some of the materials that you're going to be using all the way through the various stages. Through to the end where you have your price with and without VAT and there's a copy of that payment schedule as I said. If we now go back there we go, you can see the program has generated this written quote for us. Just a couple of minutes that took. You can see there, template cover letter. You can edit that template yourselves. Rewrite that so it comes across exactly how you wish it to. Information regarding the job. All the way through to the end. And as I said, there you can see we've allowed provisional costs is rounded them up to the nearest hundred for the electrics first and second fix. Total quotation price with and without VAT, obviously including our markup margins and profits, and there we have our payment schedule according to how we've set it up, including that initial payment upfront from the customer. Now this is complete, we can save this. And we can then use our total build program to allow for some alteration type work to the existing property. We'll minimise this. So, back to our main menu, we would select the total build program. We would then have the three options, start a new quote, 
open an existing estimate and edit the master file option. I have already prepared a little quote with the client details completed. There we go, so this is already filled in for us. Same client and job details page, customer's name and address, contact details. Once we hit the save and start new quote button, the program will move on to the pricing sheet. Now as you can see, the big difference between the two programs is because this program is geared up for renovation, alteration type work, uh, loft conversions, garage conversions, um, it would be impossible for us to create a pricing sheet relevant to those type of tasks because it could include absolutely anything. Um, we have the same key, top right hand corner here, um, red boxes, blue boxes, yellow and green. Um, but what you need to do with this program basically is you add on to the pricing sheet whatever is relevant to the actual work that you are um, looking to create an estimate for. To, to load the modules on, you go to your Add New Module button. You'll then have a list of over 160 different job modules to choose from, so all different types of work. And all you do simply is uh, select the modules that you need to include onto the pricing sheet. So let's say the customer's asked us to create an archway in an existing internal wall. Okay, we need to create an archway to connect up their um, their living room to their dining room. Okay, so modules loaded up, you can see there, archway into an existing internal wall. We simply have two red boxes that we need to put some numbers into, the width of the opening and the height of the opening. So you can see instantly the program has allowed for all the materials that we could potentially require um, for that job. You've got some battens to mark out, some battens and some polythenes for the creation of a dust barrier. You have a line of labour time in there, 6.5 hours. Obviously that can be changed if you think it's going to take a little bit more than that. Simply click on the box and overtype the number within the box. Cutter, props. Any of these items, if they're actually not required, you can simply click on the little tick, change it to an X, and those items are now not required. You might want your man to do that by hand. That module is now complete. We can then add a new one. Let's say we've maybe got a couple of windows that we need to replace. So window, replace existing window with new. Click on the module. Loads the module onto the pricing sheet for us. Two windows need replacing. Pop two into the red box there. You can see everything that we could possibly require has been allowed for. Again, we can change these over. These may be ground floor windows, so we might not actually need that scaffolding tower. We just drop down on the list, choose the type of window from those available to us. There we go. And that module is now complete. One more module to load on. The customer's asked us to cut in a new door on an existing external wall doorway into an existing external wall, so forming the opening and fitting the door. We load the module onto the pricing sheet. Enter in the height of the doorway, the width of the doorway, and the number of doors required. Again, everything's allowed for. Little picture there, we can click onto that, and you can see here we can choose from um, a straight cut door with the opening, um, new bricks toothed in on edge or plaster render finish on the external side. So we'll go for the toothing in option. That then includes the um, extra bricks required for the toothing in. Everything else has been allowed for. And again, we can go through the lines and tweak any of the finer detail should we see the need to do so. The reports are all identical. Our summary is the same. Obviously this only includes the modules that we've loaded onto the pricing sheet. Again, little pie chart there giving us a graphic representation of those costs. Our markup margins, our payment schedule is the same, our work schedule, the written quote, a full bill of quantities, material order of sheets um, and a client copy of the summary. Once the two estimates have been completed, Simply save them at the Options tab at the top there. 
you would then need to use the combiner program to amalgamate the two estimates into one complete report. So you choose your combine quote button at the top there. That will open up the combiner. Simply select the new house extensions file from the drop down. Select the total build file again from the drop down. Once the two estimates are here within this box, you can see when we then hit the combine button, the program will then amalgamate all the information within the two estimates and you will end up with one set of all these reports relevant to the entire project.